This video will show how to build a high volume manual vacuum pump. This sort of pump can be used to pull the air out of a sealed environment which is useful for many scientific experiments and practical purposes. Pulling the air out of marshmallows is a common demonstration of vacuum pressure. They first expand as air escapes from inside of them, then when once again exposed to normal pressure, the marshmallows will collapse in on themselves because the air bubbles within have been emptied. This pump is the same design that I used in my previous video to draw the air out of a PVC pipe to create this vacuum cannon. The wax vapor from an extinguished candle will cause water in the air to condense into a thick fog as vacuum is pulled with the pump. A light bulb without the glass will even stay lit for several seconds in a vacuum before burning out. This vacuum pump is composed of PVC pipe and fittings and two simple one-way valves that will be made using sheet rubber. Both valves will be mounted to a 2-inch PVC end cap, which will be modified first by drilling a hole to accept the threads on a quarter-inch hose adapter. The hole drilled should be just small enough that the brass threads bite into the PVC for an airtight seal. The first of the two one-way valves will be mounted over this brass fitting on the inside of the end cap. Two pieces of one-tenth of an inch thick sheet rubber are given a hole in the center to fit over any of the threads on the fitting that might be coming through the cap. They are then super glued together to make up the base of the valve. A solid piece of sheet rubber of the same size is super glued over the top of the base, but only held on by glue on one side of the hole. This will allow the top sheet to flex open and let air pass by if it comes through the brass fitting, but prevent air from returning if the flow changes direction. With a ring of superglue around the hose fitting, the one-way valve can be glued permanently into place. Before making the second valve, the end cap will need to be affixed to the main body of the pump, which is a 16-inch length of 2-inch diameter PVC pipe. Some PVC primer and cement is used to join the cap to one end of the pipe. Now about a quarter inch away from the bottom of the cap, a hole is drilled on the side as an air release for the second valve. 5 sixteenths of an inch is an adequate diameter for this hole. Using more super glue, another piece of rubber with a matching hole is lined up and glued over the air release. To turn this into another one-way valve, another solid sheet of rubber is glued over top, held on by only one side of the hole to allow flex. I found that for the top sheet on this valve, thinner 1 16th inch sheet rubber works best, but the same rubber as before will do if thinner sheet is not available. With both valves now in place, if a piston seals this pipe and is pushed forward, air will escape through the side, and when pulled back, the side valve will seal and the inside valve will allow air to be pulled through the fitting. Repeating this process will draw a vacuum in whatever chamber the fitting is attached to. To make the piston, I start with an inch and a quarter PVC end cap, which is already a close fit inside of the 2 inch PVC pipe, but to make it an airtight seal, the cap will need an o-ring installed. There are a number of ways to cut a groove for an o-ring, but the method I've found that requires the fewest tools is to mount the cap to a drill and use a rat tail file to grind a ring as the drill spins. The o-ring I am using is quite thick, so it takes a good deal of time to grind a groove deep enough for it to sit in. A narrower ring could possibly be used and would require less time, but thin rings are less durable and may need to be replaced more frequently. Once the o-ring has been snapped into the groove, the piston is complete and it can be mounted to the pump shaft which is a 20 inch length of inch and a quarter PVC pipe. More primer and cement will get the job done nicely. Before moving on to the next step, a length of quarter inch vacuum hose should be pressed onto the brass fitting at the base of the pump. All the moving parts that allow this pump to function have now been completed. The rest of the design is simply there to make it convenient to operate, starting with the base. The first piece used is a 2 inch to 3 inch adapter which will need to be slid all the way down over the 2 inch body of the pump. The adapter has a ridge built into the inside wall to prevent it from being slid freely all the way over a pipe, so that ridge will need to be ground out. A large drill bit works nicely to quickly remove the problem as can be seen here, but a razor blade or a dremel will work as well.
Some sandpaper smooths out any rough edges and this part is complete. The second part to the base of this pump is a 3 by 4 inch PVC closet flange, which come with a stop in the center that is made to be knocked out from the larger end. This flange will be connected to the 2 by 3 inch adapter that I just modified using a short length of 3 inch PVC pipe. Because the base of this pump will be over the top of the exterior one-way valve, the joining section of 3-inch pipe will need to have a gap cut out of the side to allow space for the valve to open and close. Once the gap has been cut out with a handsaw, the section of pipe will want to spring closed slightly, making it too loose a fit to glue into the fittings. Placing the piece that was cut out of the pipe back into the gap, but backwards, will hold the pipe open as it's glued into the adapter. After an hour or so, the glue should cure enough to hold the pipe open on its own so the backward section can be removed. It should come out easily since placing it in backwards caused it to only touch the adapter at the edges. With another swab of primer and cement, the adapter can be glued into the closet flange. The base now only needs to have a hole drilled just above the flat portion to allow the vacuum line to pass through. With this done, the base is slid over the top of the pump body. Before it reaches the bottom, a layer of primer and cement should be placed as shown on the pump to be sure the base is held on firmly. It is then slid in place against the end cap, being sure that the gap on the inside lines up with the one-way valve. The base is completed by feeding the vacuum line from the brass fitting through the hole that was made for it. Looking at the finished pump, there is a section at the top that is there to prevent the piston from being pulled all the way out by accident. This part is made by gluing a 1.5 by 2 inch reducer into a 2 inch coupling. Once done, the assembly can be dropped onto the end of the pump shaft with the open end of the coupling facing the piston. The open end of the shaft can now be sealed with an inch and a quarter end cap. Through this cap, a 3 quarter inch diameter hole is drilled to fit a handle. For the handle, I use a 3 quarter by 10 inch long dowel that is simply pushed into place. The shaft is now complete and ready to be inserted into the rest of the pump assembly. A large amount of heavy grease should first be spread into the pump opening and a thick coat given to the piston as well. If the o-ring on the piston is a tight fit in the 2 inch pipe as it should be, it may require being fed in at a slight angle at first and should then slip into place with a twist. Any excess grease at the top of the pipe can now be cleaned away and the coupling and reducer assembly that was slid onto the shaft earlier can be pressed on. Since it's possible that the piston may need to be removed for maintenance in the future, rather than permanently gluing the stopper on, several short self-tapping screws are drilled through the coupling to hold it in place. If there are ever any problems, the screws can be removed so the shaft is able to be extracted. The pump is now fully operational. One additional modification that can be made is to splice a vacuum gauge onto the line from the pump using a three-way hose connector. A vacuum gauge will allow the user to tell just how much vacuum is being pulled, with 30 Hg being the maximum possible. These gauges are readily available at auto parts stores. The open line from the pump can now be connected to anything that requires vacuum pressure by using another quarter-inch hose fitting. With every upstroke of the handle, air will be pulled from the hose and then ejected through the exterior one-way valve on the downstroke. This pump is now ready for years of use with many different projects, such as my vacuum cannon. If you would like to check out the video that that project is featured in, you can click here now, or click one of the other images for more of my past videos. Thanks for watching.